Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Margaret Staples, aka Dead Lugosi. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for joining us. I'm doing all right. Thank you for having me on your stream. It is very <laughs> fancy. I'm uh, I'm super excited to have you here. I think this is going to be a ton of fun. All right, everybody is uh, is subscribing. Jimena, thank you so much for the sub. Eco, thank you for the sub. Certainly, I just got the scoop on this about uh, mm-hmm. I didn't even realize that all of my my last few guests had beards. So um, I I didn't have enough time to get the prop beard over to to Margaret before the stream, and I apologize. <laughs> It's too bad. We're just gonna have to just pr- just pretend that I'm wearing Copper Beardy's beard right now, and and yeah, in your imagination, I'm blending in. Oh, thank you for the cheer, Razor One. Um, okay, so so, Margaret, for those of us who aren't familiar with your work, do you want to give us a little bit of a background? Oh, um, sure. My work. That's all funny. right. Here we no. go. Hype training. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm 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 on a team um, at a company called Twilio Quest, and tech, Twilio Quest T- Twilio is actually like a, a pretty big tech company. Like it, not when I was hired, but it's been growing just really fast since I was hired. So now it's actually a pretty decent sized tech company. But I work on a teeny tiny team at that tech company, and all my teeny teeny tiny team does is we work on an educational video game called Twilio Quest, um, which is what we're going to be looking at today and Twilio Quest is a free educational video game that mostly teaches uh, programming skills Um, and we recently this year uh, released a new feature which is an authoring guide so that if you wanted to create your own educational content within like a 16 bit bit, um, game that you can do that and add to our community of learners uh, experience and we're currently developing like an extensions gallery platform so that we can review community created content and make it available uh, more easily. And it's very exciting. And I would love more people to make custom Tulio Quest content. And that's exactly what we're going to do today, which I'm I'm really excited about um, because I don't I'm not a game creator, right? I've done a couple streams throughout the the history of, of Learn with Jason where we've played with certain game mechanics like we um, we opened up some 3D modeling and we we got ourselves like a little walking dog model in a in 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 one setup and then we've uh we so we've done little bits. Oh, what's up Ben? Hello everyone on the raid. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um and and so, you know, for for me game game dev is one of those things that I've always wanted to learn how to do and to make things more interactive and playful. And so far I've kind of been limited to things that I can do with buttons like tic tac toe. Right. So I'm <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> I'm excited to, to learn a little bit more about this. And I, I think that, you know, the the 16 bit games, they really have a, a special place in my heart. I I came up in that generation of, of the, that was the option. It was that or nothing. So <laughs> it's uh, it's very exciting for me to to kind of see how this all works. Yeah, um, we're going to make a game developer out of you right now. It's happening. Yes, I'm ready. OK, so so let's talk about this a little bit, because I, I feel like there's just that that immediate mental hurdle that I face, which is it's too much. Like there's graphics, there's motion, there's collisions, yeah. there's points, there's all this stuff that starts happening when you start thinking mm-hmm. about how to make a game. And my brain immediately goes, no, that's too hard. I should stop. So in the developer community, um, uh, one of the one of the things that I like, first of all, like my early professional life was absolutely impoverished by the fact that I did not know the developer community was a thing. Like mm. the first decade that I was working professionally as a developer, I did not know that there was a community out there to like help me on that journey. And once I found it, I realized that that's like unlocking special bonus powers. Having a community that you can like interact with about this stuff just makes you pick it up so much faster absolutely. and in better depth. But what I learned after joining said developer community was that if you really want to become an expert at something, you don't just learn it, you teach it. And so we wanted to make creating this educational content accessible to developers, not professional educators, not professional game designers. So Mm -hmm. we wanted to take as much of that scary too much out of it, which is why uh, we created a extension template. So just like uh, just like with any other development, first thing you do is you clone the repo. So uh, you, you clone the repo and what you find in that repo is a bunch of defaults to start with, including an already pre-made map. Um, and not only is it a pre-made map, it's a pre-made map with 
in a bit of um, lore trickery that allows you to keep it as simple as you want to keep it. So in the lore, these custom extensions by default are offered in a VR training environment. And by mm. VR, I mean 90s style. Everything is neon and 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 partially void. So um it, it, if you want to keep it really simple, if you don't want to do, I've actually seen people create really amazing educational content just by cloning that map over and over again to make more missions without having to approach the map. Develop. I've also seen people who got really into the map creation, but who weren't really into more of the like technical checking people's work bits who made like fun, just explore it levels just by modifying the map without digging into the programming piece. So like oh, okay. whichever piece you feel inspired to dig into, you can just focus on that and let the extension template do the heavy lifting in all of the other areas is the idea. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So I think th this is, this is, this is exactly what I need is is training wheels for my brain so that I can get into this without feeling overwhelmed by it. And, you know, I, I, I love that you took the time to do this. I feel like that's such a such a big thing. Oh, so shout out to my team, because I personally did not. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a teeny tiny team and each one of us is wearing like at least three hats. Um, and none of the hats that I'm wearing have done any of the heavy it comes to this this authoring guide uh, shout out to ryan and kevin who did all of the heavy lifting for the authoring guide my big contribution has just been making it like making sure our community is aware of it and making sure that the learning resources that they need to engage with it is there like i am much more of our community human i have developed content in tulio quest but i but not nearly as much as i would like because time is finite <laughs> Really is the big bummer about time is I, I like I look at my to do list and I see the, the time passing and I go, so that's just not going to happen, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, honestly, one of the one of the skills that I've really had to master as I've gotten older is saying no to things that I would really like to say yes to, because Absolutely. there is simply a finite amount of time and energy and focus and and making choices is important. Yeah, I, I and you know what? That's maturity as an adult. Like I, I feel like when I really started to feel like a grown up is when I could I could walk into a restaurant and say, you know what? I'm I'm actually not going to eat that one pound block of cheese that you're willing to serve <laughs> me because I know that ultimately that's not going to make me happy. <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so like one of the one of the weirdly adult things that I now do is I ask about the desserts first, so that when I'm making my meal selection, it is like, well, if the desserts are crap, then I'm getting the steak, and then the steak is both the meal and the dessert. But if the desserts look amazing, maybe I'll get a salad, so that my real <laughs> meal is the giant piece of cake. See, this is the, this is adulting. Oh, that's yeah. I mean, I think you're adulting at a level I'm not ready for. I also just realized I'm I'm talking about my eating choices when yeah, Cassidy is saying knowing what I ate last week. We we were in Chicago for a team offsite last week, and we ate everything. There's nothing left. Chicago is a wasteland now. It's just all the restaurants are like, sorry, no food. <laughs> you went like full Godzilla and just were scooping humans was... off the street and munching on them. Like there's nothing in Chicago now. <laughs> just just tumbleweeds and regret. Um... <laughs> Honestly, that sounds like it would give you indigestion. You know, it, you're not wrong. Um, <laughs> so. So let's let's talk. Uh, let's see. Is it is it worth talking, or should we actually start doing something? I feel like it might be time to to just like. I, I probably should have asked this before I got on. How long is your stream? Uh, we've got ninety minutes total. Okay. Okay. So um, that's that is more than um, enough time to look at things. So you should be like we can make words. We we can make code. Whatever you like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Why don't we do this? Let's uh, let's let's switch over into the pair programming view, and we'll start looking at what the um, what the components are. And then I'm sure I'm going to have more questions because I know that oh, like so we would need to add code. That's correct. That we right? we're going to add some code. <laughs> uh, so let's let's do this. Here we go. Let's get over there. Uh, pair programming. Here we go. All right. So we're looking here. And before we get started, let's do a quick shout out to our captioning. We have Jordan here today from White Coat Captioning, uh, writing down all the things that we say. So uh, Jordan, thank you for for doing that. That is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Hasura, and Auth Zero are all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people which means a lot to me. So thank you all very much for, for kicking in. 
Um, Did you know that one of the most amazing things about white coat captioning is that they specialize in captioning things that have really technical vocabulary. They actually will like study tech vocabulary or like medical vocabulary, depending on like what they're doing the live captioning for so that they can do it so very fast. That's why they're so good at what they do is because they realize that different contexts require different top of mind vocabulary and they do that nerd work and I love them for it. Nerd work is excellent. And yeah, and it, it really is nice. Like if you if you've been watching the the captioning, if we start throwing around terms like we say JavaScript, we say SQL, we say you know JSON. Like these are all things that like you can see. Look, look at it happening. It's not <laughs> getting it's not getting like robo captioned to be misspelled or something. It's it's this is a real person who really knows what's going on. Uh, so yeah, thank you, thank you so much, Jordan, for for being here and for White Coat for all that. Um, Speaking of uh, of uh, awesome things that you should be paying attention to, this is this is Margaret's Twitter. You should probably jump on in and and get a follow in there. Um, and we're talking today about Twilio Quest. So this is this is what Twilio Quest is. I mean, this already is amazing, um, and I'm already scheming ways to to get myself a T-shirt because this is so much fun. Um, <laughs> So we're going to be we're going to be digging into this today. And so if you want a T-shirt, you should become an active part of our community. We love I, I love swag drops. So like if you are an active member of our community, specifically if you join the champions program, which is Twilio's version of awesome community leaders, um, then you get regular swag drops. But also if you oh, just dang. hang out in tech communities that I'm a part of, I am always looking for excuses to drop swag on people. For example, <laughs> um, the scholarship program, which uh, so Twilio does an annual conference um, this year. It's happening in October and I run our scholarship program for underrepresented developers. Um, and as part of that, this week, I am packing up like love boxes of swag and goodies for, for our community humans that are gonna be part of that program. And so that's very exciting. So join the active community and swag drops will happen. Wait, what's, is it TwilioCon? Am I, am I searching for the wrong thing here? Signal, it's called <laughs> it's Signal, signal. Now. It's called, it hasn't been TwilioCon in a long minute, like I, years, many that was years. The, that was but the one so that cool I went to. that's so cool that you know that. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, it, like my experience with Twilio was was really funny because I I went to TwilioCon and I didn't really know anything about Twilio at the time. I was just kind of like I knew it was up and coming and I ended up hanging out with Jeff Lawson, but I didn't know who he was. So I I'm just like there talking to him like he's a rando at the conference. And then he got up on stage and I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> didn't oops, Jeff is okay <laughs> Je Jeff is our Je Jeff is our founder slash CEO and he is a big nerd energy and I adore him he is absolutely like a developer to his core and he is the reason that we are both a developer focused company and it's the reason that like one of my favorite internal sayings that is very core to our culture is keep Twilio weird and I am about <laughs> it I am doing that mission <laughs> I love it I love it Okay, so let's uh, let's. I mean, yeah, let's. Speaking of weird, let's get weird. I wanna I wanna make some. I wanna make something. So, what is my first step if I want to get this thing up and running? Because I, what I'm looking at here, this would be to play Twilio Quest, right? To download it. Right. So you're definitely going to need to download it so that you can install your extensions into the game. Okay. So you'll want to. So definitely step one is downloading it for Mac or Windows or Linux, depending on your operating system. Um, and then after that, you're going to want to head over to the extension docs, which I have just posted to the chat, a link for that. Um, and that is where all of our existing documentation for creating your custom extensions exists. This is a work in progress. As I mentioned, we are a teeny, teeny, tiny team. Um, so sometimes there's a bit of lag in between something getting uh, implemented and it getting into the docs, which is why we have a special thread in our forums for requesting us to demo specific things during our developer streams, which happen uh, every other week during Twilio Quest Tuesdays on Twitch, which is where I was just doing this with Ryan. Hey, Ryan. And that's under the, the Twilio Quest account, right? Yes. Yes, twitch.tv forward slash Twilio Quest. And we stream every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Every other week is a developer stream. Um, and every four weeks is an event stream where we do four hours of streaming, where we are uh, raising money and awareness for a good cause. And our event stream for September will be next week if you wanted to tune in. Nice, nice. I just realized my, my thingy locked up. So I'm just going to reload that real quick. 
There it is. Don't know why that locked up. All right. Uh, yeah. So yeah, go go check out Tulio Quest. Get a get a sub in there. What's what's the the saying? Ring that bell. Smash that subscribe button. Ring that bell. Yes. Um, do all of the things. All <laughs> of the internety things. <laughs> Okay, so I have here's here's my Twilio Quest. Um, let's see, it doesn't quite fit on my browser, but um, it should be okay, right? Can I can I shrink this a little bit? I can. Okay, there it is. Okay, so do you see next to the current version where it says more? Mm -hmm. Click on the more. Ooh. Now use the drop down. Now go to the preview because all of the new extensions are on the uh, the the newer version with all of our custom art from our amazing artist Carrie. So if you go to the preview version, okay. then um, that's actually gonna be what you're gonna be creating your custom extensions for. And that is the preview until Signal when we launch it and it becomes the official version. Nice. So you are very cutting edge right now. I'm. That's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> okay. So I am I am now on the Twilio Quest 3.2 preview. It looks like we're using Alpha 21. Um, should I play it? Um, if you want, if you just want to pop in and and see the see the opening cinematic stuff, um, you are absolutely welcome to preview that amazing content. Oh, hold on, hold on. I gotta I gotta reroute my sound. Let's go to the this one. Okay. Much of our lives take place in the virtual worlds of computers. Oh, I love it. This vast virtual universe is known as the cloud. The power Shout of code, the laws the of chat. these virtual most worlds of this work. is beyond measure. Software developers wield the power of code to create new worlds where anything is possible. There are those who seek to contain the power of code, to protect their hoarded wealth and privilege. We call these forces the legacy <laughs> systems. The Twilio Quest program was created in secret to confront this threat. They would recruit and train an elite core of software engineers, known as operators, to explore and safeguard the wild frontier of the cloud. Operators have little in common with one another, except a solemn oath. To use the power of code only to unlock hope, this is so power, good. and freedom for all of humanity. You are an operator, and you have been asked to undertake a critical mission. You will assume command of a prototype cloud exploration vessel, designated the Fog Owl. If you could demonstrate the effectiveness of this new technology, it could help turn the tide of the struggle against the legacy systems. It is time to begin. Your neural interface should already be programmed with the location of our secret research facility. Twilio Quest scientists will provide further information upon your arrival. Good luck, operator. We'll see you in the cloud. Oh, I love it. This is so good. I mean, this is this is so much fun, right? It's uh, I like I love the the whole. Oh wow! And then you get to customize. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is good. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Wait, can I be no hair? Yep. Oh wait, hair. But that's gonna be a style. Yes. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my god, I love this so much. Uh, this is amazing. Okay, that'll be me. <laughs> <laughs> This is great. Okay, oh. so um, spoiler alert, or I guess cookie, um, is Yara is a team member of ours. So Carrie, our artist, actually all the NPCs in the game are modeled after people. So Kiara is actually like uh, one of my team humans, and and that's not not what she looks like. So that's fun. <laughs> I love it. Okay, all right. So, all right, I'm just gonna wander around here for a minute because it's just fun to me. That's fair. Okay, I can do something. So most of this intro stuff is just going to be, oh, that's oh, me. Oh, hey, we, <laughs> we, know, we know that person. 
This is super fun. I I love this. Okay, so, so Carrie actually gave like let us give feedback. So the weird like lines on my face are because I am absolutely an android in this game, and that is delightful to me. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let me let me maybe get into the settings here. I'm gonna take the master volume down a bit. And then let's just take everything down so it's not quite so overpowering as we're talking. Um but this is this is just I mean it it's it's a game. It's a whole game. This feels just yeah. like something that you would get, you know, it's it's not like a it you know sometimes you see like a like a thing that gets launched and it it's like, "Eh, hey, we built a game." And it's like, oh, "Okay, you've got half a level and and like it feels really kind of junky, right?" And so this this feels like something that if I like nothing about this feels half-assed. Well, this is this is this is many iterations down the road. Uh, so sure. when Twilio Quest was first created, it was created by our developer education team to service the curriculum for our training days, uh, which are called super class because we think we're funny and we're right. Um, and uh, so at, at first it was just a bunch of eight bit style gamification of micro tutorials. It was just a web page that it was it was very choose your own adventure and you mm -hmm. had you could rack up experience points and you could like um, get loot items that would show up on your avatar, but that was it. It was just it was just a web page with micro tutorials. Um, but it was real. I immediately loved it. I did not need it to be more than that for me to be completely in love with it and to start taking it to conferences and to start giving people arcade prizes for their points because I am an '80s kid and that is what <laughs> we do. We we are arcades. That's just who we are. Um, and uh, then it got sufficiently popular that its creator, our fearless leader Kevin, actually got to turn it into a legit video game. Um, um, like the magic of it is that it's an electron app. So we're teaching web development skills within mm. a web development framework. So like when you're creating your own content, if you like have some bugs that you need to work out, you just pull up your developer console and it's exactly like you're troubleshooting for your web development job, only it is for a game, which, you know, it's it's meta in a way that I love. It's it's so fun. Okay, so I think I, I would probably be able to just sit here and play this game for the rest of the stream, but I think <laughs> that's for another time. So why don't we, um, why don't we start actually building something here? So what is my, what is my next step? Next, you're going to want to go to the extension docs. Okay. So I'm going to just minimize the game here. I like that we can still hear it in the background. We'll just keep that rolling. Um, okay. So extension docs were here. I'm looking right at them. Yes. Okay. So I'm ready to begin my adventure. Mm hmm All right. So I'm going to skip the walkthrough. I will let you be my walkthrough today. That's fair. Um, so this uh, this is your actual step one because this is the documentation, but, but also your not documentation related step one is going to be uh, cloning the uh, extension template repository. Okay. The... Repository is down here, I assume. I mean, the, uh, Brian, correct us if we're wrong, but there should be a link in here, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Template repository. There it is. All right. So I'm going to take this and we will create a new uh, repo here. We'll. Or, how do I want to do this? I'm going to get a repo cl fork clone. Uh, clone. Clone. And we'll call this uh, Twilio Quest Extension. And Ryan mentions that you do need to create a directory to hold your extensions. Okay. So, the, like, what I've done here is not... I need to make a folder above the repo? Yes. Okay, so let me make a directory. The point being that, like, if you were going to install this, this wouldn't be the whole game. This would be one amongst many extensions. Oh, I got you. Okay, so, so I'll create a directory called extensions, and then I'll just run that same command, but we'll put it into extensions. And then I can just remove everything in here, right? Uh, 
What else do I need to get rid of? Let's get rid of the README, the levels, the package, <laughs> extensions, objects, scripts, images, and the tile sets. Okay. Oh no, I did it. Oh, I did. I typed extensions when I definitely didn't mean to. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time. Here we go. <laughs> Damn it. I thought I was doing so well. All right, so here's extensions. Let's move into it. Uh, I'm gonna actually open this up. And so here is, here is the extensions folder. And inside of it, we have everything that I just cloned out of that repo. Okay. Um, let's look at the readme. And it's got all of these goodies in it. So we can go back to the docs that we were just reading. Got the template. And npm install. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Now I just realized, do I need to like name my extension and have that in its own okay, folder it's, too? It, it's 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 funny because what you've done is you've given a singular name to the multi directory and you've given a multi name to the singular directory and that took me several read throughs to understand what had happened. I think I may have just confused myself. Um, <laughs> so so you I... want so you want an extensions directory and then within that you want to clone the extension template with its own custom name for the new oh, okay. extension you're going to create. I think I can just do this and it'll just work. Let's see. No. Um, but if I create... And Ryan is attempting to drop you uh, deep links for the docs because he's, he's a super helpful human. I appreciate it, Ryan. So if I just start moving everything in, is that going to... Are you just going to work? I mean, probably, but you know, technology's kind of. Uh, I believe. Okay. All right. We're in. <laughs> so I have an extensions directory. I've now named a folder. Oh my. Okay. Do we need to take a break? <laughs> I need to lie down. <laughs> Ooh, All right. So that's exciting. Uh, I, I promise this is not nearly as difficult when you're not also attempting to stream at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, just me over here trying to keep up with, with lots of new things. Okay. But now that I have this, I believe in the right place, path to extensions folder, good. We're into the, the repo name we've installed. And now I can go into extensions under, after cloning extensions into the extensions folder, you should be able to see it in the extensions submenu under settings in the game client. So I need to go and find this, right? Yep. Okay, let me pull this back up and here extensions and I'm going to find my directory which is under here 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 uh, what did I call this extensions did I just call it extensions I don't know that happened once one 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 directory you called Julio extension. quest extension oh that's right the singular directory is the Okay, and then extensions, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, I did not make this easy on myself. All right, <laughs> so we have, uh, these are our extensions. We have these two loaded extensions. These and extensions are being loaded from the directory above. It says none. And Ryan thinks that we'll need to exit the game client and load back in in order to see the default mission. Okay, cool. I can do that. So let's quit the game. And we'll open it again. Uh, let's make sure. You'll want to select the right version again, which in the future will auto select. It just doesn't right now. Okay. Uh, 
And now... We have it. I have one, uh, it looks like I have a... Oh, it looks like uh, your dot .git uh, directory stayed in the parent directory, so it thinks that you're attempting to load two extensions, one of which is named dot .git. Okay. Okay, I did this all sorts of wrong, but we're gonna we're just gonna be okay with that. We're for doing now. fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but we're in the right place now. We've got. Um, I put this into my downloads folder. That's why it's weird. <laughs> Who? Okay. I will fix that later. But we have this right. this extension here. Yep. Good. It is now it is now loaded. So um, if you want to go back into your uh, game. Okay. And you can go look around for the VR terminal, which will probably be down and to the right. I could be wrong though. Oh, it... I'm wrong. VR terminal. Oh, or we can do the console warp. Console warp. How would one do that? Um, okay. So if you, uh, open up your, um, Developer tools. Uh, which is probably, you probably need to, use, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I doing? Toggle, Toggle developer tools, there it is. Developer tools, there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then go to console. And then typey typey. What do I, but what do I type? Work, open parentheses, um, and then single, um, quote and then fog underscore owl and then close quote and then close parentheses. Or just copy paste from where Ryan posted in the chat. Okay. Hey, look at me. Now you're in the de in the what will once you finish the prologue be your default starting place, which is the bridge of the fog owl, which is your spaceship in the cloud. Um, the yes, and now down at the right, this is the VR console. Nice. And there is your VR mission template. So this is what you can modify oh, to create your own custom content. Okay. So when we go into this, am I like a little bit, I think I squished it all a little bit when I moved the things around. As you can see, we are very uh, 1990s lawnmower man, Tron situation kind of VR. This is so fun. I also love that like everybody's in here. Oh, Ryan, look at you got an actual photo. <laughs> so lots of this stuff is in there specifically to demonstrate uh, right. stuff that you're gonna wanna make use of when you're creating your own level design. Um, so this is an, that little globe is an interactable object. Uh, the treasure chest is one of the ways that we have to give um, objectives. Um, that That's generally for um, objectives that don't have prerequisites, whereas the laser barrier is a, a, an option for creating um, missions that have, objectives that, that have prerequisites because like a laser barrier can't pass it. So if the, the, the later ones can depend on the former ones, if, gotcha. if that scans. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, great. So that that makes sense to me at a high level. Um, so then when we when we climb in here and we look at what's going on, we can see, let's see, we've got some images. Um, there's Ryan. <laughs> Showing off how to create a custom avatar uh, for your NPCs. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. And we've got templates, conversations, objects. Oh, there's, and yeah, you're, there's you remember a the icon. globe? The, you can, you can uh, use the, the, the globe's custom interaction stuff to mimic to create your own. It's an, it's an example piece. Got it, okay. And then we've got a green light. And so as we're kind of poking around at all these like i'm guessing this is the green light so if i look yep. at its those icon, uh those have condition those are also conditional um so those will turn on when you complete the treasure chest mission if i'm remembering correctly i know they're conditional i think they're conditional on the treasure chest mission oh 
Oh, nice. Okay. So if you click back to tutorial, it'll give you the option to complete it again. What is the name of a company that makes... Ta-da! And that's what our learning objectives look like. This is obviously just an example, but every learning objective has um, has this basic interface. It's called uh, your your hacker interface, and and um, it has each each one has three tabs. The first tab basically just tells you the name of the objective and what you will get if you get it right. Um, the second is like a checklist of what you need to do, and then the third tab is the deep dive help tab, where if you're not really sure how to do what they're asking you to do, you'll find um, lots of information in step by step and links to external resources to help you out. Nice. No, mm -hmm. this is this is great. Okay, so if I want to make one of these, then it sounds like I go into the objectives, uh, which are where I had this. Objectives. So there's an example objective, and you get some HTML. That makes sense to me. You have code samples. Okay, so this is just like writing a blog post. That is, that's great. And then you have a JSON so object. This, this is where you kind of define the structure of your objective. This is where you will give the information that will appear on that first panel. Mm -hmm. uh, that just the, the vague, this, the title, the vague description of what it is. And you that's where you set how many answers you need and of what type. You can also have them, you can also have objectives that don't require them to put in anything um, and they just hit the hack button. And then the objective can check that they've done things on their computer. That's how we check things like that are programming oh. type objectives. Um, it, it, you can just say, here's what you need to do. And when you're done, hit the hack button. And then when they hit the hack button, the validator will check whatever you've told it to check. Maybe that's installing something. Maybe that's writing a program that does something. And then if it if it passes all the checks, then you pass. And if it doesn't, um, we try to do this really well and we encourage other authors to do this really well. We, we try and give super informative error messages because what we have found is that developer humans don't much like reading the docs. And so <laughs> a lot of them will just jump in and try to like complete the thing based on like a, a glance at the objective. And then the first real feedback you get to give them is whatever error messages you put in. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, no, this is this is great. I love this. So um, helper validation fields. So this is this is cool. Like I like this. This is um, so we've got our helper, and so where where do the actual answers get set? Uh, the, okay. So that's going to be in your uh, in your validator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm so I'm, the, in in the description is where you tell it whether or not it's accepting answers mm -hmm. um, and what they get if they get it right and the title and description. Um, and then in the validator, that's what will run when they hit that hack button. Yeah, and so I see, so here's my helper. And where did the helper come from? Magic. <laughs> but it, it looks like the answer one and then this is Twilio comes from where? So the validator fields are specified in the description and then the helper delivers them to the validator. Oh, I understand. Okay. 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 Got it. All right. I understand what's happening. And then we've got another one here where we've got a description. And, and on the map, uh, on the map, unless I'm mistaken, that first example will be the treasure chest and that second example will be the laser barrier. And as you can see, because you completed the treasure chest, now those lights are flashy, flashy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so the same same deal here. And now you can see that when you complete this one, the laser barrier goes away. And this will let me exit, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, and now I'm on a... Now you've transitioned maps. Ooh. Right? It's fun. This is great. Cool. Okay. And um, so the, there's also like conversations as part of the extension template, and that is probably obviously 
how the interacting with the NPCs gets specified. So um, if you are super into creating the learning objectives, you can dig into that and leave everything else as default. If you're super into map creation, you can tackle that and leave everything as default. If you're super into like, storytelling and conversations you can tackle that and leave everything else to default it, it really does try to like give you the freedom to tackle whichever piece you're feeling inspired by without having to like stress about all of the other things mm -hmm. okay cool all right and then we've got um it looks like maps and so well maybe maybe what we should do is we should uh we should mess with some of these a little bit so let's let's change the rules for one of these objectives i want my objective to be what is what is the right way to greet a corgi <laughs> okay and then down here what i want in my validator is for this We can go string to lowercase and we can say <laughs> very I, I'm immediately violating the first rule and, and providing unhelpful hints but let's uh, let's give this a shot and do these hot reload like if I come back in here is it already running um it is. So yeah, if you like, you could you could say you could argue that you should pet a corgi, but you would be wrong. Um, oh, but it gave me the wrong answer. Uh, that's because oh. it, it checks in order, and you got the first that's question right, wrong. That's right. That's right. Okay. Fail early, fail often. Hey. I uh oh. You. Am I in the right one? E example objective, yes. Maybe it just didn't quite reload yet. So if you leave the mission and then come back to the mission, it should reload it is what Ryan is saying in the chat. See, there are multiple, see, that's why I couldn't answer you when you're like, will this, re will this have already changed? Because there are like different versions of yes and no to that question, because some things require like, some things don't require anything. Some things re that you can like trigger the reload in like the console, some things you can just exit and come back in and some things you have to leave the whole game and come back into. And I don't know which of those is which of those, which is why I read Ryan's messages in the chat. <laughs> okay, so we'll go with Twilio and then we will. And chat we'll says maybe you changed the wrong uh, validator. It's. Maybe you change. Maybe you change right? the validator it's for the exams. first one. But I thought you changed the validator for the second one. Answer and two. TypeScript T time says JavaScript can be weird, and I I feel that that is always the right answer. Mm -hmm. You are not wrong. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, I'm not sure why it's giving me a different answer here. Did we leave? Did we leave? Did we go back to the fog owl and come back? I if, did. And it, then we might just need to exit the game and come back. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, let's try it. Okay. Bye. And then we'll do it one more time. Oh, and uh, did you save? Always a good question. I did. <laughs> so let's get into the preview. I guess what I can check next is uh, if I get in here, I need to warp again. Yeah, because you haven't completed the 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 preview stuff where you run around and talk to people and it explains to you how to play the game. Okay, here we go. Now, if I come in here, we'll say that. There we go. There we go. Yay! Hey. We got the right wrong answer. <laughs> now, if you boop it, you succeed. Yay. 
Okay, so we have done uh, some actual gameplay here. We we changed an objective. Um, and so you're saying that the other way that this can work is if we uh, if we want to check like external code, we can do that as well. Absolutely. So if uh, in the description, if you take out those um, answer fields, or even if you leave them in, you, you can also check things in addition to having them fill in the blank, um, but you're not required to have them fill in any blanks or give you any answers in order to hit the hack button and have the validator run. So if you removed um, these the, the curly bracers with the answer one and answer two in them, um, that would still it would still work, only it would display the hack button without any of the form fields ahead of it, okay. and it will still run that validator. Um, so obviously, if you run the other validator other as is, it will not work because it will be looking for answers that do not exist now. Um, but if you remove that, you could then use the JavaScript and your access to the player's computer to check basically anything that you want. Okay. Which, which is how we do things like, uh, so the level in the old version of Twilio Quest that I personally developed and is my baby because I got to make a game level um, is uh, all about PHP. And so um, I use this to do things like check whether or not they have the right version of PHP installed, um, check whether or not they have the uh, package manager installed, check whether okay. or not they have uh, fo followed instructions to install specific components. Like it, like it just, you can just check directly and and then give them that direct guidance, which honestly is one of the most valid, valuable parts of Twilio Quest because as a developer, especially when you're just getting started with new technology, there is, there is such a gulf between reading it and then implementing it and then knowing what piece of it you didn't get quite right or whether mm -hmm. what you read is now out of date. And like, that can be so incredibly frustrating. So it's very nice to have that feedback loop of, uh, it told me to do a thing. I did the thing. It told me I got it right, or it told me I got it wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so that, so so if we wanted to do this, like if um, let's let's say we want to test that somebody like wrote some code correctly, is the is the standard like uh, we're going to teach you how to write a function in JavaScript, and so that function needs to return a value. I need to check the output of that function. Is the is the standard for that to write it as like I would put the function into this? So we we ask. Okay, so I I, I may or may not understand your question. So the way we do it is we get the player to tell us where we should look for their code. Okay. And, and then it, and then we tell the player what to name it, and then we run it. Nice. Okay. So if if we wanted to do that, well, actually, let me ask, given that we've got about 40 minutes left here, and I know that we wanted to look at editing the map a little bit as well, how how deep down this rabbit hole should we go? Like, what, what should we look at first to make um, sure we well, cover everything? Because you're interested in code and IDE things, I want to point out that Ryan has uh, uh, highlighted the fact that we do actually have an in-game IDE. So if you wanted to add the in-game IDE to your hacker interface, that's uh, oh. that's a Boolean in that JSON. So it's not required. It's it's it can be useful, but also like you can people can just use whatever IDE they want. But the, it can be useful because then you can put like uh, the surrounding code bits that you don't want them to have to worry about, and and you can just have them like tweak code instead of having to write right from scratch. So it's it's very useful in that way to have nice. the built-in IDE. But yeah, I definitely think that um, before we completely run out of time, we should open up Tiled and look at how the maps are put together because that's that's super fun for me. That I'm, it's all super fun for me. It's literally whatever you want to do. I I yaml, love my yaml, job. Yaml, 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 day, okay, day. so if I go here, what I <clears throat> I just hit the the show IDE thing, right? Oh, did I typo it? I fix it. I fix it. <laughs> okay. And so if I go back, open it again. Uh, you'll probably need to leave the, oh no, show code editor, it's right there, it's right there. I, Ryan put a, a hack in to do window dot reload external modules equals true so that it wouldn't require that again. Um, but it, wait, I hit the- I But hit it the, didn't do the thing. It didn't do the thing, so maybe- it didn't I, do the thing, Ryan. Maybe I do need to leave and come back. Ryan hasn't deployed that fix yet. <laughs> ah, perfect. 
<laughs> it's fixed in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> Consequences of a teeny tiny team. Okay, so I am gonna have to quit the game and come back in. Let's let's do it. Oh, Ryan's pointing out that we are on the alpha preview version. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, taking all of this with a grain of salt because we are living on the edge, y'all. We, we are the cuttingest of edges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's see. So let's go into. And Ryan says the code editor is broken. So we might still not see it. Holy oh, oh, like the, the code editor is broken. OK, that's that's fine. So we'll head out to the owl. And then let's hop back in here. And now I think we should all be running the, the well, I guess I should rerun that um, reload external modules. Okay, so that should pull everything back in for us. So why don't we move on then? Let's, uh, let's, let's, what's the next thing we want to look at? Okay, so either you can uh, look at it depends. Would you like to look at content to see how things are implemented, or would you like to open up the map editor and look at how things are laid out? I feel like the map is probably the biggest mystery to me. Chat, do Let you have do preferences, contents, or maps? Let's. I'm going to start looking at maps, but if y'all overwhelmingly say you want to look at content, uh, we'll we'll switch. Oh yeah, special requests always welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so if I want to do maps. I can see over here in the docs, there's a thing about editing maps. Uh, it's a work in progress, so I'm going to lean on you. That's totally fine. So the first thing, as I mentioned before the stream, but uh, our chat did not see that. Um, the first thing that you need to do if you want to edit maps is download the tiled map editor, which yes. is how we edit our maps. So here is the tiled map editor. And this is, it's free, it's donationware, so if uh, if you're going to be using this a lot, maybe maybe kick them a couple bucks. All right, so also I... Also open source all of the things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have tiled. I have opened it, and this is the extent of my understanding. Cool, so now you're going to want to uh, open um, and navigate to that extension directory so that okay. we can find our default map files. Oh, wait, I put this one on my downloads, didn't I? Let's go in here and here and here. I guess I can just, yeah, this one extensions. Or does it want this one? Keep going, keep going. Into the levels? Yep. Maps? Wait. PR mission template and then maps. Okay. Still doesn't want to let me open. Did we still? I thought I opened project, but it doesn't seem to. Do I need to open um, file? Avanash thinks that we should open file. Okay, let's open file. And we'll do that same thing. So downloads, go here. And, and Ryan agrees. So yes, open file instead of open project. Maps. Uh, Space Garden. I like that Space Garden. So let's. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this. And here fun. we are in tiled. Okay. So base, just some basic orientation around the tiled UI. In the upper left is where you're going to see uh, all of the information on whatever you have selected, generally objects. And that's super important because to make things interactable in the game or to have custom behavior in the game, you need to be able to set that object's information or grab its ID and grab its ID. And that's where you're going to find it in that upper left area of the UI. Um, the central panel is pretty obvious. That's like your canvas. In the lower right, that is your objects palette. Um, and 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 also like your your environment palette. That's your palette. 
Um, and then above that is where you're going to find your layer selection. And that does matter. Um, as you can see, there's there the things stack on top of each other and some layers have special functionality like the collision layer. Um, it, it is it, it won't show up on the map, but you can see all the pink stuff outlined on your map. Mm -hmm. Those are all drawn on the collision layer, which is kind of exactly like it sounds. Anything you draw on the collision layer, the uh, your avatar will not be able to walk through. It's a collider. Got it. Okay. Oh, and then we put a little exit tile here. So you mark collision for the trees, but if I was like, don't walk on the flowers, I could uh, theoretically you could put a collision barrier there too. And if you'll if you'll if you'll uh, notice, not the whole trees are collidable, and that's to give more of the impressions around layering because you can walk behind a tree even though you right. can't walk through a tree. That's cool. Um... And Ryan mentions that you can also click the eyeball in the UI next to each layer and if you want to be able to hide stuff. Like if you don't want to have to look at the collision layer, you can turn it off. Mm. Oh, this Which, is you know, is good because you only really want to view the collision layer when you're working on the collision layer. Oh, and then here's my custom stuff. And then there's like Twilio Quest stuff and a whole bunch of tiles and, and fun things. Mm hmm This is cool. Okay, so if I want to put like... Oh wait, how do I... Do I have to like grab the whole thing like this? Or you can do it one square at a time. It's entirely your call. Oh god, how do I actually move uh. things? Um, okay, so if I... If I select this whole thing... Do I... New tile set, export... Um, I think you just drag it onto your map. Oh, you just, so after I've selected, yeah. I can just yeah. move over here yeah. mm -hmm. and then I can say, let's put some trees over here. Yep. But ow. All right. So now I want to, oh wait, I put that on my collision layer. Incorrect. Let's put it on objects, probably. Uh, you can toggle the eyeballs to see where oh, wait, the existing no. trees are. Top. I'm going to put it in top. <gasps> okay. So I've put it in top. Now I want to go to collision and I want to actually grab that collider. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, then and my understanding gonna... is that it doesn't actually matter what tile you use, but keeping them all the same is useful for your eyeballs. Yeah. Okay. So then if I hide this top, oh, but then it loses the, how did this happen? They just grabbed one, one thingy. Okay. So let's go over here and grab my one. My one thingy, <laughs> and then I'll put it on. Is it decoration? Yes. Okay. So decoration. Boom, boom. Oh wait, probably want to use the <laughs> actual, actual thing. Okay, I'm doing it. It's happening. You're doing it. You are a digital. You're doing gardener. it, Peter. <laughs> okay. So, all right. I added some trees. So if I save this, save it. Yep. Is it? Did I do it? Is it working? Like if I go in right now, is that gonna hot? Is that gonna hot reload? Um, I don't know which of the various reloads will be required. <laughs> <gasps> oh, hey, look, your trees. My trees. Okay, so I'm I'm seeing a couple mistakes I made. Like I put the shadows on the top layer, so I look like I'm underground here. Oh, so the the depth is really gorgeous and i love that carrie has given that to us but it does make it a little bit finicky it's a it's a gorgeous effect once you figured it out but yes ah, the layers so that it behold, looks like you're walking in front of or behind stuff it's a little tricky yeah this is i mean this is great though like how cool is this so if i go to my top and i delete okay so you go away how do i even do that because it's two layers Hmm. Oh, something to know is that um, unless I am very much mistaken, your avatar will be walking around on the objects layer. Objects layer. So if I take these out. So anything that you put on the top layer will go over your player and anything you put on the lower decoration level layers will go under your player. Okay. And there are multiple decoration layers because sometimes you want that for effect rather than depth. Mm -hmm. 
I think I know what I'm I think I know what I need to do. So here's my here's my theory. So I'm going to delete these two. I'm going to go to decoration. I'm going to take this and then I'm going to take this one, right? And then I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to take this and put it right there. And then I think what'll happen now that I've done that. Save. Okay, then I need to leave. Oh, and Ryan mentioned that you can actually warp to the level you're already in. If And that is a, that is one of the oh, many forms of reload. that's cool. Okay, so if I did this right, what'll happen? Ta-da! Yay! <laughs> I'm Good the job. greatest game dev alive. <laughs> okay, so I all right, that that's starting to make sense to me. And and I'm I'm understanding how this works, right? So so the cool thing about 2D art is that you're only thinking about one plane. So mm -hmm. if the things that you're making have a transparent version and then like the thing that's cool about this is each of these trees is really identical but by combining them in different ways we get oh, i need to make that different <laughs> um but by combining them in different ways we get what looks like a varied landscape and so we can kind of see you know the the flowers themselves are all the same flower these little trees are all the same little tree but because of the kind of different arrangement they start to feel very unique and it, it starts to, you know, feel like an actual world. So yep. we can just get clever with our shadows and that tree overlay and bada bing, bada boom. We got ourselves a, a little copse of trees. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. This is very cool. Great job to, to you and the whole team. This is this is excellent. I'm a, I'm a game dev now, right? Like that's you are. That's, yes. that's it. That's, that's a, that that's, has happened. That has happened. I, I have watched you become a game developer. Mm -hmm. It's a good day. It's a good day. I'm feeling good, everyone. <laughs> uh, now, 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 I this, this this does mean that I feel that you've committed to completing an entire Twilio Quest extension so that mm. we can feature that Twilio Quest extension on the new extensions platform that we're working on. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Might uh, might need to do it. Okay, so for for that to be true, there's it feels like there's one more thing I need to understand, which is uh, Netlify by Netlify and Twilio Quest. I think it could it could be a thing. This is a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's let's maybe let's maybe poke it. How could I? I I want to I want to set the folder that somebody's supposed to check. So if I want to do that, let's um. Let's make that happen. So, so let's say I've got my, like my extensions here in this learn adjacent extension. Like, what if I just for the sake of this, let's do a, um, like a sample code directory, and I want to I want to check this sample code directory for some file, um, and so we'll call this like objective.js, and in here I'm gonna be doing I don't know. Let's let's say I want to export a function. Uh, and that function is going to just return, right? So I, I effectively just want to validate that I did this properly. There's a, there's a file, I exports a function and that function puts out the string boop. So I know how to write tests for this. How do I make that dynamic? Like how can Twilio Quest find this file and check it for me? So uh, Ryan suggests that you look at the validator examples uh, for reference because, so like I mentioned, in order to check code that people have run, you need to know where to check it. So mm -hmm. generally we break this up into multiple objectives. So, um, so or, or you can have it be multiple answers on the same objective, but you have to, you have to first know where to look and then what to run, and then you can run it. Now we tell them what to name it, but we let them tell us where to put it because not every operating system is is gonna put things in the same place or or do we want to constrain people in that way? Okay. So let's see, this one's for Python. And and so 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 generally we will we will ask somebody for the full path to the directory that we will then look for all future code examples from. Okay. Context extensions directory, file URL. Um, let's 
Let's see. You passed the trial of reusability. I love it. Uh, okay, so... I'm probably just scrolling right past this, but I don't see the part where I set somebody... Do they just put it in as a string, or is there like a file browser? No, they put it in as a string. Oh, I got you, I got you, I got you. Okay, so then if I'm going to do that, I could do something like in my objective for objective two, the first field, uh, which I'm going to need to look at this one for, has a name of like source code path. Is there an object like a, is there a pattern for these? Am I doing something horrible by doing snake case? Uh, no, because you're the one that's going to be referencing it later. Okay. I mean, I guess we can at some point create a style guide, but I don't think that's been top of mind just yet. So it would be path to your code. Oh, and Ryan mentions that uh, we save the file path as an environment variable, which the first objective validator example has. Save it as a... Uh, here's the example. Am I looking at it? Helper dot success. Here. Okay. So this is setting it as a an environment variable? That looks like output to me. Yeah, what is, I don't, I'm not quite sure I understand. Oh yeah, no, I see, I see. So the, it's, it's, so the first part is the output and then the second part apparently is environmental variables here. <laughs> it's, okay, okay, okay. So it makes an environment variable, okay. Oh, okay, so apparently all of them will have the prefix TQ underscore, and then whatever is in the name will be the rest of that environment environment variable. I see that. Got it. Let's see, where are you writing code? On your... And then you can reference that variable in all subsequent validations. Thank okay. you, Ryan. Great. Okay, so then once they've set this, then in my validator, I would be checking for uh, answer one, which is going to have a different name. It's going to be, oh, okay, I do want to make this. We'll make that, we'll make that easier, more, more JavaScripty. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get source code path. And then if no source code path, not even going to validate right now because I think we're a little short on time. Provide a valid file path to where your source code lives. And if there is one, we would do And then we would pass in uh, in our environment variables source code path and source code path. I guess we can probably simplify that a tad. Okay, so now theoretically this will store this. But I guess we don't really even need to do that part because we could just kind of look for the, the source code path, and then I could do something like import. Let's get uh, FS. Actually, how would one do this? Let me think. Because I want to require it, right? So I guess I could just do like a dynamic require down here. This is, this is absolutely going to explode if I did this wrong. <laughs> so let's get, <laughs> let's get boop. Uh, equals require source code path. I guess we can do like a path.join. 
Is this making people's hearts hurt? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's go to that. And uh, we'll go for boop.js. Right, and then I need to get path from require path. All right. Then we will, oh, I need assert again. Ryan thinks that you might be mixing common JS and ES6 module syntax. Absolutely possible that I'm doing that. Let's see. So this is, I am because I need to get, let's see out here, this would need to be exports or we can so that should work because now that's that's all common js and then here in my validator these are all common js i think right and then i need to assert which i shouldn't have deleted from my import so i'll just get it back here I want to assert that boop equals boop. <laughs> and <laughs> let's see how the actual check goes here. So try, oh, so we're going to try assert dot strict equal. I did this all sorts of wrong. Let's, let's just copy paste. I Chad should. is suggesting module dot exports instead of exports. Well, I was doing it as a as a named one, but okay, chat, if you want to do default exports. Sheesh. Um, yeah, let's do that. That's fine. <laughs> okay, so then we've got this. We're going to insert strict equal. Okay, so our function does not boop if that happens. So theoretically speaking, wait, where did I just put this? Did I put this in the wrong one? I did, whoops. <laughs> okay, so we'll undo this one. Eee. This is why we recommend that you be very um, descriptive when you're naming your extensions directory and that you only work on one at a time. Yeah. OK, so I think I think this should work as long as I put in the right file name. And so let's get back in here and give this thing a try. Let's see what breaks. <laughs> Okay, so if I go, oh boy, let's let's just run the the PWD here. Um, let's get this one, and then we want it to be sample code. So that should find the boop.js, probably. Ryan thinks that the syntax for environmental variable setting isn't quite right. Definitely possible. It's mm -hmm. hacking. Still hacking. Yeah. I'm assuming I, I, I broke it. Yeah. I let, do you want to open up the developer tools and see what your error is? Ooh, what a great idea that I wouldn't have thought of. Cannot find module. But why? That exists. No, it doesn't, because I called it objective.js for reasons beyond comprehension. Fine. Um, yeah, let's. What are that. words even? Okay. Can I restart it? You can potentially warp to the same level, but okay. you might have you might have to cl close and reopen. Let's let's warp to the same level. Um, I 
let's see. You told me warp. And then I go to uh, VR mission template player entry one. And so these are just the default values. And then space garden is, oh, we don't want to go to space garden though. We just want to go right here, right? I think yes. But ow. Okay. That's a good, that's a good, that's a pro tip. That, that, that's why, that's why, uh, I asked Ryan to lurk in the chat because he has all of the pro tips because he is the pro. Okay, so let's go PWD again. And I'm going to copy this. And this one should go to objective. Okay, you can access my downloads folder. I did it! Ha ha! We did it! Yes. Excellent! Okay, so now we have the ability to, uh, to kind of write whatever code, have somebody put in their their valuables or their like the location <laughs> of it, put in their valuables, uh, <laughs> you know, wallets and watches into the bag, everyone. Um, so we we can now have them add in this this variable. And so I got this wrong though, Ryan. Let me go check. Let me go check the docs again. Da -da. No, this one. This one. Yeah, I thought you were just on it. Oh, yeah. name and value. So yeah, I just did that. I did that wrong. Name and value. Okay, so that should give us an actual and, and environment variable. Which you can then reference for all of the other objectives that you're definitely gonna add to your custom level. So now if we break our code, let's make sure that it, it still catches. So let's try again and see if it does the thing. I need to reload it. Let me. I always get excited when I see the success. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm also excited. Although in this case, we are, we're trying to make it fail. <laughs> hey, thank you for the sub, Tammy Claps. Okay, show me a failure. Oh, okay, so I missed a piece. Because it should be... Ryan thinks that require might be caching in a way we don't want. Uh-oh. I don't even know how to do that. When all else fails, exit the game and 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 open it back up. That's always my strategy. It's the equivalent of turning when it off and fail. back on again. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's try that again. And oh, Ryan, I can't do that. I can't. I can't eval. <laughs> I feel like that's just that's just me begging to break your game or your computer. Or my computer. <laughs> <laughs> so you 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 skipped past this because uh, because we are doing a specific thing today. But if you had gone through the progression in the game um, as a normal player, you would discover that one of the first things that we make you do as a player is um, is is promise us that you, you understand hackers, that you running code on your machine hackers. is dangerous. Yes, absolutely. Okay, this time it's gonna work. There it is. <laughs> oh no! No, we did boops. it. We did it. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I think this is great. And then uh, Eco brought up a good point, which is that we can probably just like query string it and then fix it. And then we'll go back. Let's reload. Okay, something with the caching is is definitely not quite doing what we want, but that's okay because we know how to fix it. We just start and start it all over again. <laughs> okay, um, so we are we are coming up on time. So 
for someone who wants to go further and do more, what would you recommend is a, uh, a next step? So many things. Okay. So, um, I definitely recommend that anybody that is interested in playing or writing levels for Tulio Quest head on over to our forums because we have an amazing community of humans that will help you on your learning journey, that will help you on your game dev journey. Uh, it's just a great group of people to be tapped into. So highly recommend that you check that out. You can also head over to the Twitch TV forward slash Twilio Quest channel where we stream every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Every other week is a developer stream where Ryan and I uh, talk about either whatever you have requested we talk about and demonstrate or whatever we feel like if you haven't made any requests that week. Um, and then every four weeks uh, we have our education partnerships program stream and then every four weeks we have an event stream. Next week is an event stream. We'll be streaming for four hours and we will be raising awareness and funds for an awesome nonprofit that does amazing community work and that is also a great place to ask questions and get instant feedback we always have somebody playing and somebody just hanging out so that means somebody available to answer your questions if you have them um, and you should also make sure that you have that link to the docs for uh, extension authoring and also let's see what else what else, Ryan? Oh, Discord. Yes, of course. Thank you, Ryan. You should head on over to the Discord. If you prefer chatting to more long form interactions, we have a Discord for that. So you should uh, check out all of the cool links that Ryan is dropping in the chat. Also, if you would like to experience all of the cool stuff that Twilio has to offer beyond our educational video game and maybe get some uh, live training from our experts, I highly recommend you check out our annual conference that is happening in October. That is a Twilio Signal Conference. And if you happen to be an underrepresented developer, the scholarship program is for you and you should absolutely check that out as well. Um, I guess that's it. Questions, comments, concerns? Not for me. That was excellent. I uh, it's it's always fun when the person who comes on the stream is also a streamer because <laughs> we, like, we like both wrap up for each other. <laughs> um, no, this was this was so much fun. I think this was this was excellent. I you know I'm, I'm continually impressed just by Twilio as a company. I think um, the the breadth of things that Twilio does is impressive. And I love that investment goes into like making a video game to teach people how to code. That maybe doesn't seem core to Twilio, but I, I think that uh, it's it's cool that the company understands how much this stuff actually helps and makes an impact and improves the community. So I love to see that investment go there. I'm really, really excited to see the work you're doing on it. Uh, thank you to you and, and the rest of your team who hung out in the chat today. Y'all are wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, chat. Make sure you go and follow Margaret on the Twitter. Get on there, get uh, and and do that, do that sub on Twilio Quest. Make sure you you go and do that one. Um, today we've had live captioning all day, thanks to Jordan from White Coat Captioning. Thank you so much, Jordan, for hanging out with us today. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors. We've got Netlify, Fauna, Hasura, and Auth Zero all kicking in to make the show more accessible to more people, which means a lot to me. While you're looking at things on the site, make sure you go and check out the schedule because it is just, it is just off the wall, y'all. It's so much good stuff coming. So we're gonna do uh, CSS Grid container queries. I'm, I'm downloading Chrome Canary so we can use some future CSS. We are gonna do TensorFlow on Friday. That's a special time. We don't usually do Fridays, but we're gonna do one this Friday. With, uh, with Becca, we're gonna learn about using machine learning TensorFlow. We're doing UI and UX. We're doing team workflows in Notion, uh, Next and Contentful in GraphQL. So, so, so many good things that you can come in and learn. Make sure you hit, click that uh, Google Calendar button so that you get it added and you can see what's going on. And you know, don't forget if you're not already, make sure you follow and subscribe to Learn With Jason. With that, I think we're gonna call this one a success. Margaret, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks so much for having me. This was fun. This was an absolute blast. All right, chat, stay tuned. We're going to go find somebody to raid. Margaret, thank you. We will see you all next time.